Welcome to the AMBOSS tutorial on administering vaccines. In this video, we'll be using the standard vaccination technique, which is intramuscular injection into the deltoid muscle. This technique is used when injecting almost all vaccines from childhood onward. We'll be referring to the recommendations of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. You'll need the following. Disinfectant, disposable gloves, sharps container, cotton swabs, vaccine, bandages, and possibly a syringe and needle. Choose a needle length and gauge depending on the patient's age and the thickness of adipose tissue. Needle lengths range from 16 millimeters, or 5 eighths of an inch, to 38 millimeters, or 1.5 inches. Lastly, make sure to use a 22 to 25 gauge needle. The first step of administration is to rule out any absolute contraindications to vaccination. A moderate or severe acute illness, such as an infection with fever above 38.5 degrees Celsius or 101.3 degrees Fahrenheit, is an absolute contraindication to vaccination. However, a simple cold without fever isn't. A severe allergic reaction to a previous dose or allergy to a vaccine component are also absolute contraindications. If the patient takes anticoagulant medication or has a bruising or bleeding disorder, use a small gauge needle and apply pressure to the injection site for a few minutes after vaccination. Alternatively, subcutaneous injection may be advisable depending on the specific vaccine. In patients that are pregnant, immunodeficient, or with scheduled surgeries, the decision to vaccinate or not should always be made on an individual basis, depending on the specific vaccine and indication. Counsel the adult patient or the guardian of a minor patient before receiving verbal consent. Information leaflets, known as vaccination information statements, are available in many different languages and may be useful during the counseling stage. Inform the patient about the disease that vaccination is to be carried out against, the duration of immunity and the vaccination schedule, the normal local and systemic reactions to vaccination, which includes pain, swelling, flu-like symptoms, and low-grade fever below 39.5 degrees Celsius or 103.1 degrees Fahrenheit, potential adverse effects and rare complications. Disinfect or wash your hands with soap and water. Many vaccines can be acquired already available in a ready-to-use syringe. Next, confirm the active substance, shelf life, dosage, and route of administration. If it's necessary to mix or reconstitute the vaccine immediately before administration, please refer to the information provided by the manufacturer. Changing needles isn't necessary except if the needle has been damaged or contaminated. Usually, refrigerated vaccines should be administered quickly and shouldn't be stored at room temperature for more than 5 minutes. It's best to seat the patient in front of you with their arms relaxed at their side. Vaccinate the patient's non-dominant arm, for example, into the left deltoid muscle of a right-handed patient. Palpate for the most muscular part of the deltoid, typically located about three fingers inferior to the acromion. Disinfect the selected area. The injection site should be completely dry before injection. Put on gloves while waiting for the site to dry. Remove the cap and expel larger air bubbles from the syringe. Small amounts of residual air do not pose a risk to the patient. Hold the deltoid muscle with your non-dominant hand without lifting the subcutaneous tissue. Hold the syringe between thumb and forefinger roughly like a dart Encourage the patient to distract themselves from the pain by coughing or holding their breath. Quickly pierce the skin perpendicular to the surface. The standard puncture depth is about 2 centimeters, or 3 quarters of an inch, but this should be adapted to the thickness of adipose tissue. Aspiration before injection is no longer considered necessary, so quickly inject the syringe content. Remove the needle and dispose of it by dropping it into the sharps container immediately. Don't attempt to recap the needle. Wipe off any escaping liquid before applying a bandage to the site of the injection. Keep an eye on the patient in case of a syncopal episode. The patient should refrain from heavy physical exertion and alcohol for 24 hours. In the case of adverse effects, the arm should be rested until these subside. Be sure to complete any vaccine-related documents, with the most important being the vaccination certificate. This needs to contain the date of injection, the disease vaccinated against, trade name and batch number of the substance, which can be found on the sticker of the ready-to-use syringe, and the stamp and signature of the vaccine administrator. Only a documented vaccination counts. Information related to vaccination can be found in the AMBOSS article on vaccination, along with lots of other information and links.